In this lecture we'll discuss the adrenergic receptors, or also known as adrenoceptors. They are classified into two main families of receptors, alpha and beta receptors. Each of these receptor types has a number of specific receptor subtypes that have been identified. They are classified according to their responses to the adrenergic agonists, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and isoproterenol. To simplify this let's check the chemical structures of these three agents. And let's make a simplified representation of them. The affinity for beta receptors increases as the group on the amine nitrogen gets larger. So we can conclude that beta receptors are characterized by a strong response to isoproterenol, with less sensitivity to epinephrine and lesser sensitivity to norepinephrine. Beta receptors are subdivided into three major subgroups, beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3, based on their affinities for adrenergic agonists and antagonists. Beta-1 receptors have approximately equal affinities for epinephrine and norepinephrine. And beta-2 receptors affinity for epinephrine is higher than for norepinephrine. So, tissues with a predominance of beta-2 receptors, such as the vasculature of skeletal muscle, are more responsive to the effects of circulating epinephrine, that as we discussed in the previous lecture, is released by the adrenal medulla. Beta-3 receptors are involved in lipolysis and also have effects on the detrusor muscle of the bladder. The alpha receptors show a weak response to the synthetic agonist isoproterenol, but they are responsive to the naturally occurring catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. They are characterized by a strong response to epinephrine, with less sensitivity to norepinephrine and lesser sensitivity to isoproterenol. They are subdivided into two main subgroups, alpha-1 and alpha-2, based on their affinities for agonists and antagonists. Alpha-1 receptors present on the postsynaptic membrane of the effector organs, and alpha-2 receptors are located primarily on sympathetic presynaptic nerve endings and control the release of norepinephrine. Stimulation of alpha-2 receptors causes feedback inhibition and inhibits further release of norepinephrine from the stimulated adrenergic neuron. Alpha-2 receptors are also found on presynaptic parasympathetic neurons. Norepinephrine released from a presynaptic sympathetic neuron can diffuse and interact with these receptors, inhibiting acetylcholine release. The alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors are further divided into alpha-1a, b, c, and d, and into alpha-2a, b, and c. Some drugs are selective to one subtype of these receptors. For example, tamsulosin is a selective alpha-1a which is found primarily in the urinary tract and prostate gland, so it is used to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia, with fewer cardiovascular side effects as it does not affect the alpha-1b subtype found in the blood vessels. We've already discussed the autonomic receptors distribution and effects and details in a previous lecture, but let's summarize it again in a minute. The activation of alpha-1 receptors produces, vasoconstriction, increased peripheral resistance, increased blood pressure, midriasis, and increased closure of internal sphincter of the bladder. The activation of alpha-2 receptors produces, inhibition of norepinephrine release, inhibition of acetylcholine release and inhibition of insulin release. The activation of beta-1 receptors produces, tachycardia, increased myocardial contractility, and increased release of renin. The activation of beta-2 receptors produces, skeletal muscles vasodilatation, bronchodilatation, increased muscle and liver glycogenolysis, increased release of glucagon, and relaxed uterine smooth muscle. The activation of beta-3 receptors increases lipolysis. That's all for this lecture, in the upcoming lecture we will start talking about the adrenergic agonists. Please help me to know if that lecture was useful for you using like or a comment. Subscribe and keep following us.